So I told him, you're gonna have to offer me two million for Kahai. Oh, oh, we're on. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Thursday Live Lesson here at ukulelaunderground.com. With yours truly, my name is El Drinker. <laughs> Joined by Mr. Aaron the Voice Nakamura. Say what's up, Aaron? What's up? And by the multi-million dollar man, apparently, Mr. Kahai the Legend Fergan. Say what's up, Kahai? What's up? So uh, it's Thursday Live, boys. So what we do here is uh, we answer any and all of your questions via email, via website, via whatever it may be. Uh, however we can get those questions in, we'll try to answer them as best as we can. I try to answer as best as I can, and then these two guys will put in their two cents, and we'll try to come up with the super answer just for you. All right, so uh, let's, let's not waste any more time, Kahai. Let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, throw me a question, buddy. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I got to Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is from the the um, forum. So mm -hmm. it's from Rob, and he asked, uh, on the nice. topic of ear training, what are your thoughts on using a tuning fork to tune my ukulele? Mm -hmm. I can see that using my electronic tuner may be quicker and more yeah. accurate, mm -hmm. but I'm using my eyes to tune with it. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, I think in private and stuff, like you can basically do whatever you know, do whatever you want. And I think tuning forks are you know a really cool. Uh, device, but it's basically a relic at this point, and I think um, another uh, a, a better way to kind of do it other than just a tuning fork, because the tuning fork was like, okay, I can kind of tune it closer to that. You can do that for you know for early training and stuff, but you're basically training yourself to hear just that one note, which is not bad, not a bad thing. You know, that's uh, that's that's good, but. Um, there are also like better ways to you know to kind of do it. The way that I did it when I was uh, as far as ear training goes. Um, I kind of already knew like the chords to some songs and I knew that my ukulele was in tune. So as long as your ukulele is in tune and you, you know, you, you pick out a song and stuff. Um, or no, 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 actually, sorry. Let me take that back. My ukulele is not in tune, but I know the chords of the song. And I know, um, say, for example, the song chords are G, C, D, G. So it does that over and over and over again. My ukulele is off tune, right? So what I would do is I would try to play G and I would see if my G chord is either flat or sharp um, based against the recording. So it kind of works just like a tuning fork where like you, you know, you, you hit the tuning fork and you, you place it down and stuff and you're supposed to match that note. Uh, in this case, it's like, it, it's almost, um, uh, very practical because that's kind of what you would do anyway. If your ukulele is off, like off tune, and you're jamming with a bunch of people, and you know what chords they're playing, you play along, and you kind of determine for yourself if you're flat or you're sharp. You know, and that's that's the best ear training for me. That you know that I think um, that I that I could have that I could have done for myself, and I figured that out. You know, when I was uh, when I was learning how to how to play ukulele. So, you know, kind of just. Uh, you can either strum the chord against the uh, against the recording or play each one of your notes. So for example, the top string is G. So if you know if the chords are G, C, D, and G, I can strum my G chord and if it's like if it's off tune, you know, I'll be like, okay, maybe I'll play this note on uh, when I know the G chord is gonna come up. And if this note sounds, you know, sounds correct. Then it, you know, then it's good. Then from there, I can kind of use this string to tune the rest of my ukulele. All right, and then try it again. Like try to see if I can play along with that. But if I can't quite hear it, then maybe I'll use the C on the second chord because I have a C string, right? And um, it doesn't have to be an open string either. So for the D chord, I can play a D note and kind of test that against it. So I'll play the D note against the D chord that I hear in the recording and then kind of like adjust my C string, right? I'll play the C string second fret, adjust it if it goes, if it needs to be uh, sharper or more flat. And um, and from there, I tune the rest of my ukulele. I think that's a lot more practical than say using a tuning fork. Not saying that the tuning fork is, is useless or has gotten, you know, you know it's, uh, it's, it's not uh, it's not a good way to do it because it's it's definitely you know it's definitely uh, it definitely works but I feel like this is a little bit more practical because uh, in in that situation or the situation where you would be jamming with a bunch of other people that's kind of what you want to do anyway kind of just want to tune accordingly to them you know like and it, even if it isn't perfectly in tune so that's one thing if um the tuning fork is gonna be perfectly in tune which is a good thing you know you're gonna hear that and you're gonna hear it in tune but 
not everyone is going to be in tune, all right? Not, not everyone that you jam is going to be in tune. Say I was jamming with, uh, with Aaron and his friend, for example, and Aaron and his friend are just slightly flat. So instead but, of me but going they're tuned to each other, yeah, yeah. but they're tuned to each yeah, other. Yeah. So instead so we of sound good together, <laughs> yeah, those yeah. two guys sound great and flat together. You know, like it sounds good, but it's a little bit flat. If uh, if you've been using a tuning fork this whole time, you're gonna you know, you're gonna tune yourself, and you you got that ear train to tune it normal. You're not gonna be like, hey guys, can you guys retune your instrument so that you guys can sound like, like me, <laughs> <laughs> like me, basically, you know. <laughs> so or I mean, you know, e even worse. Like, what if there's like a whole band up on stage and something? They ask you to come and you tune like right before the show, like right before you went on stage. But they've been playing on stage for a long time. Hot lights, all that stuff. You know, they've kind of gone flat together. So like, there's a six piece band that you're gonna play with, and you're going up and you're sharp, you know. But you're like, not just tune. What's going on? So. In that sense, you would have to use your ear to retune yourself anyway. So I think that's a good um, that's a good way of of kind of hearing it, and it's something that you could use in like in the real world, in the real world situation. What do you guys think? Oh, can you go over just really quick mm -hmm. um, how you would tune if you um, if you had one string that was in tune? Okay, because okay. like because he he would be like you know if that's kind of the case, mm -hmm. right? He has right, a right. tuning fork. Yeah, it's. To one pitch, yeah. So yeah, it's like yeah. just one that's of the true, strings, that's true, that's true. right? Yeah. But it, but it'd be pretty funny, or it'd be pretty interesting <laughs> if he had like a whole set of tuning forks, <laughs> like G, C, E, and A, yeah. A tuning fork. Yeah. So he, he uses one one tuning fork. <laughs> he mm. tunes one of his strings. Yeah. yeah. So like, say he has the G. Yeah. yeah. I what? mean, okay. So the G's in tune, but then the you know C, E, and A are like are off tune. That's yeah. what it sounds like, but. This is in tune. So, so he knows do, that the G is in G, tune. Yep. So, what, so do you, what does he do? It's supposed to be G, C, E, A. So the next uh, closest up would be A. So from G to A is a whole step. So each one of these frets are a half step each. So half and half. So two halves make a whole. So fret so number two. G string, on the second G. fret. Yep. Yeah. It's supposed to be uh, this bottom Your string. Your A string. So you just kind of listen. This note is right here. And it sounds a little bit sharper. So this is kind of how you train your ear. It's like, so you, that needs to go down. You play it together. If it matches like that, you're all good. Okay, so now that you have G and A tuned, you know that this, uh, this E string, so E, and then half step up is an F, whole step up is a G, another whole step up is an A. So these two should be the same. So E string, so, yeah, fifth, fifth fret, fret should be open A string matched be to your tuned, now tuned A string. Yeah. So A sounds flat, so you want to go up this time. And I'm not like cranking it all the way, I'm just doing small little cranks. Still flat. Sounds pretty good. So now that I have G, E, and A, so C, a whole step from a C is a D, another whole step is an E, which should be the same as your now tuned E string. Yeah. So C string, fourth fret, and is open E string. And open E string. Should be the same note. So you play these two. That sounds a little bit higher, so we're going to go down. Still a little bit. Almost there, just a hair. Yeah, just so, a hair or something. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh, too, and, much. Yeah, too, much. <laughs> too much. Too much. Yeah, too much. For and and mm -hmm. people wondering like there what you're is. kind of there looking for. Is. Yeah. Huh? You're looking for like when you pit both strings and you only hear one note. Yeah, if you yeah. it sounds like just one string, then you're mm -hmm. you're in mm -hmm. tune. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. So so, now so when you in that thing, sense, that's like um, helping him train his ear. Yeah, yeah. You know that way too, right? Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. don't even need uh, an in tune string. Yeah. Right. You just like, need to like be relatively in tune with yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. You're mm -hmm. with yourself, so yeah. you could just detune a string. And then tune your whole ukulele to that string, yeah. and then that would help your ear training too. But I mean, yeah, I mean, like back when I was like back when I was learning, um, I would do that same because I didn't have an electric tuner. Like tuners were not a thing back then. <laughs> like yeah, it, it was not a thing. Um, 
I mean, it well, they, was, they, but yeah, not for us they, kids. They like were in available. High school. They were definitely available, but they were kind of expensive. Like Fifty bucks, I think, like was the was one of the cheapest electronic tuners and whatnot. And then they came out with the smaller ones for like twenty, thirty bucks. But I remember Ryan had like this nice Korg one, which is like this long. You like plug it in. Yeah, and stuff you plug that. it like, in. I, I had one of those. Really? Yeah. So yeah. fancy. It was like hundred something bucks for one of those things. You know? I was. What, I was forget. It? I don't I think like it was that bucks. expensive. Really? I always maybe as a kid I was like, nah, it's got to be like hundred something dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think when, when I went to Larry's mm-hmm. like to get one of those, it was like twenty dollars at the time. Mm. You know, so I, I probably dropped off, but mm. then yeah, got pretty cheap. Yeah, so um, you know, back then it wasn't it wasn't a thing. So when I was learning, um, I somehow figured out like half step down. I don't know how I how I did that, but I, I was like. You know, because I would learn it in school, like with with my friends and stuff, and we'd have these, you know, like songbooks and whatnot. And the songbook told me that the chords were G, B minor seven, and C for you don't write. But whenever I played G, B minor, C on you don't write, I'm like that doesn't sound uh, right. <laughs> so you you tune your you eventually yeah. got your ukulele down enough. So I, I don't know why, but I just like went like this, and yeah, and I was like, oh, that's it right there. So uh. I just have to be like you know a little bit lower so i tuned it so that it's like yeah. it's half a step lower and i'm like that's it, now it and that was that was gb minor yeah. and c and yeah. i was like and you know i just trained my ears so much that way and stuff that like if you guys ever come to our live shows i uh, i have a pretty good ear now that like if if i'm just a little bit like flat from uh from aaron because it's as long as we're relatively in tune together you know i don't even care if it's in tune or not but if it's relatively flat from aaron uh, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be upset. Like during the song, I'm just like gonna try to see if I can come up with a um, with a break during the picking or the strumming or something, and just like yeah, twitch just a little yeah. bit, like a little bit. How sharper. do you? How do you? Because like I noticed that too, where mm-hmm. you'll you'll kind of just like tweak mm-hmm. one of the tuning yeah, pegs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you know which string? Can you just Ooh, hear? Yeah, it? Yeah, I can tell. I you can, can just tell. hear yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, especially if I'm doing picking and stuff. Uh, so oh, so last okay. night. Yeah, okay, that makes we, sense. Because we played last night when I played body serving. Whenever I would hit this, it was so flat and it was driving me insane. Oh yeah, last so night. so <laughs> just from the picking probably helps yeah. more. Oh, definitely. More so yeah. than playing. Yeah, chords, I mean right? you can you can still you can still hear it because like when you uh, when you strum, um, they're far. I mean, other than the top and the bottom string, they're far enough away from each other where you can that kinda, you would, you can kind of tell yeah, like where yeah. the registers coming from. You know, uh, which if it's like low, medium, or high sounding note. You know, that is, is off is playing, is from off yeah, yeah. yeah okay so so and that just comes with practice yeah, right? yeah like that's... being able to hear that <laughs> but i mean I've, I've been i've been doing that like ear practice with like with the with the track and stuff for mm-hmm. years before i even like started playing professionally so yeah so you were you were just listening to whatever a tape or yeah, CD tape, CDs and playing along and then mm-hmm. making sure that your ukulele was tuned to or even, the recording even like surf and stuff because every kid knows how to play surf but mm-hmm. that album is half step down oh so if you play along with the recording half you're like down. why isn't it like why yeah. isn't it right you know? so everybody teaches it mm-hmm. with c a minor yeah. f g7 and it's not like it's wrong because it is you know like the c shape a minor yeah. shape yeah, or whatever yeah. it's actually they were just b, tuned yeah, down b. so you yeah. had to tune your ukulele down enough where it was it, tricky it made sense. and it's not like you had lessons like on had youtube yeah, like nobody how do you play this? Yeah. Like, nobody, nobody you have to figure you it out yourself yeah can you imagine being an ukulele teacher back then and then it's like well Let's play it as authentic as possible, so everybody's gonna have to tune down half a step. It's just like no, like back then you just like no, we're just we're. I know it's half a step down, yeah. but everybody's gonna play it like <laughs> yeah. this because it's just easier to teach. Yeah, tuning forks. I mean, they're cool. They're like they're like a cool relic and stuff. But there's better ways. I mean, even like a pitch pipe would be better because a tuning fork you gotta have to like find a surface to see if you can you know uh, like uh, you know. Well, you can actually, make I don't know though stuff. because like. Because electronic tuners mm-hmm. have been so like they're so cheap now. Yeah. Um, pitch pipes, they're made even cheaper than they used oh, to be. Oh, really? So they're not as so they're not as. I haven't tune. used one in, yeah, in at least a decade. Yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> so. I actually wouldn't recommend <laughs> okay, getting a okay, pitch okay, pipe okay, anymore, okay. just because the ones that you find are mm. probably not the mm. best quality. Like what, you know. Yeah. What What I do is like mm. I actually have tuners. I have yeah. electric tuners and I have expensive tuners. Yeah. But I'll pull my guitar down and I'll be like, oh, I'm too late. Like, too late. So you just use yeah. your ear. <laughs> it's not even in like another part of my house. It's just like, oh, it's all the way on the other side of my room. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I'm like right at my computer. So I just pull up like, mm. you know, guitar tuner with like sound or something. 
and that usually get you a pitch or yeah. something, you know. Mm-hmm. Or even if you go to like YouTube and you look for tuning <laughs> a guitar on YouTube, I'll get you a pitch, and then I'll I'll do that same yeah. thing where mm-hmm. I just like tune by ear. Yeah. So relative pitch, I think you should practice that way. I think you know, like that yeah. that would be way better because it's it's super practical, and you can use it when you're jamming other people because not everyone's gonna be perfect. So when you tune to that perfect pitch fork, and everyone else is off tune, you you're gonna go crazy. Like it's you're gonna go crazy. Yeah. All right, so um, hopefully <laughs> oh, that. Oh. Uh, so Alan in the chat yes. mentioned that he got to talk to Troy Fernandez from okay. the Kyle cool. Creator Boys, yeah. and he asked them why a bunch of their songs were ta- half tuned half step down, yeah. or yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. half step down, and he said that they were touring so much at that point that it was hurting their voices, oh. and so half step down was just enough to mm-hmm. make the difference, mm-hmm. um, which is interesting because that's mm. what we do too yeah, yeah in fact when we went to denver we were tuned half, half step, step down, down. Uh-huh. because uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. aldrin was sick <laughs> a couple weeks yeah, before <laughs> denver and we were scared to like bump it up too yeah. soon because i could have like i think i could have but i didn't want a chance it plus like the uh, the altitude i always have altitude problems in denver like i love playing in denver and stuff but like the altitude there is really yeah. scary yeah so g- a couple weeks before mm. denver aldrin got sick we tuned half down mm. just so that we could play our regular shows and then we kept it for denver just yeah, so that right, we felt yeah. confident in, we played out uh, we played a few wednesdays in half step down yeah. and it sounded like every time we go back to half step down it's always like man that's how these songs are supposed to sound yeah, like yeah but then like after a few weeks you're like it doesn't sound that good <laughs> yeah or just like you know you gotta mm-hmm. get back to regular so that mm-hmm. the half step down sounds good when you need it yeah yeah, yeah you know because yeah, yeah. if you get used to the half step down you're, you're just... gonna have to go even further down <laughs> a whole step down. yeah if you get sick from that point you know <laughs> I, like I for sure know um, bands or mm. like punk bands or metal bands where their usual tuning is like half or full step down and when they play live they have to sometimes they have to go like two whole steps down oh. just to you know compensate and so it's like <laughs> yeah you can tell that like yeah. those guys they probably played the you know what they wrote it in yeah. when they're younger and then it's yeah. just they're getting older and older and they're getting older <laughs> this- and lower this is uh, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit real, irrelevant, but um, I, I love the band Panic at the Disco, like when they came out and stuff, oh, especially when they came out. Um, I love that guy's singing, and it's it was always kind of like super high, you know, that kind of uh, kind of register. Yep. And um, I was excited because they came out with this like acoustic album, like that was like iTunes like exclusive and stuff. And um, instead of going sit tight, I'm gonna, meet, he went sit tight i'm gonna need oh, like the like whole, whole album octave. like he went a whole octave down uh-huh. i was like this is not good uh-huh. <laughs> and i was like one of the biggest panic fans so uh-huh. i was like I, I hate to concede but this is this this is pretty terrible uh-huh. <laughs> this is pretty terrible so i was just like so disappointed because i'm like acoustic I, album I, yeah because it's like because that's that's what i was kind of doing at the time i was you know like doing the paulo santos like every youtuber like doing the you know like acoustic uh songwriter acoustic guy you know, uh-huh. kind of thing so i was doing the acoustic thing like like everyone else on youtube and i was like super excited to hear that acoustic version of all the songs that i've been jamming to i'm like yeah this is it and i'm like this is not good it's not <laughs> it not a chief <laughs> they should have just half step down yeah, or something. Been, yeah. Our whole st- even i would have taken a whole step whole down, step down two, yeah. even two steps down but going very low because that guy's voice sounds really nice like uh, high when, when, high yeah, yeah. So when it's super low, you can you can really tell that like he's like he's struggling to reach the lower oh, notes. The lower you know? like, notes oh my yeah. god! <laughs> yeah, just go half step. Yeah, man, it's it's cool. It's it, fine. It'll give you no. a little bit of a break. <laughs> no one but. can tell the difference. Well, some people can, but it's fine. Yeah, Mike. So like when we first started doing yeah. half step after Aldrin got sick, <laughs> Mike came to the show and I was like, "Are you guys tuned differently?" <laughs> he was like the only person who noticed. Yeah. 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 but that's because it's Mike. <laughs> also, like uh, you guys tune half step down, and because like you were kind of sick at Denver too, right? Like you. Oh yeah, yeah. at that point yeah, I was sick. Were... Yeah, yeah, but I wasn't singing that much. You were. Actively... No, you sang one or two songs. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember you guys like talking like <laughs> backstage, and it's like, I don't know if I can do this song. This song is pretty high. Yeah. Like, even then, it's like, yeah, kind of stretching it. Like, but, I was scared of Benny and the Jets. Yeah. Because uh-huh. we already take that a step lower than the original, and then it went, like, half a step lower than that. <laughs> yeah. So it's was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's, no, it was okay, though. Yeah, yeah. it turned out fine. Especially that, that, that part where you're doing, like, Benny. Right? Yeah. yeah. Benny. 
the the funny uh thing that happened at the San Francisco mm-hmm. is you guys were playing um a Breezin. Yeah. And I grabbed Aaron's guitar, but it was sitting in his case for a while <laughs> after you guys played. Yeah. So I heated up and I pulled it out. I was flat. playing and I was like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> like, so I tried to like kind of compensate by like playing, you know, like moving mm. up half, a, like moving up a fret. Mm. And I was like, oh, but it's in between. A, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, what do I do? Mm. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, mm, it's, it's going to bend it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. But yeah, great question. I mean, like, you know, just from just tuning forks and stuff we can go to all these different subjects but definitely try that out i mean uh tuning forks are cool to have but if you really want to get into some ear practice do that do some like um uh what is it relative pitch training yeah or just um also like i kind of enjoy figuring out just like single note melodies that will help you that's like a really easy intro to Mm -hmm. to ear training Mm -hmm. Like that's the first thing that I really like. You know, it yeah. feels satisfying if you can right. find like a, into... a really mm-hmm. simple melody and mm-hmm. then just figure out like pluck it out. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I mean that's uh, it, it's great with uh, with with our playalongs because it's an ukulele, so it's even more relative. So mm-hmm. you can use our playalongs to kind of tune your ukulele in that way. Oh, oh no, I wasn't even talking. I, about I know, no, 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 but, but I wanted yeah. to add that on to the to the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're just like making up like a. The, the picking for like any for i any think it was yeah radio, the first basically. first song that i ever list like figured out on my own was mm. hene hene koaka mm. my bro- brother is mm. and it has like a really simple mm. like you know so mine I, was you don't write yeah because i didn't have the album uh-huh. and i just heard the kids like um kind of playing it and stuff is when i first thought that that the song was called you can't write <laughs> oh. <laughs> so um so i would hear that first part Yeah. Right? So you would hear that part, and then that's it. I didn't know how the song went. Like, you know, I didn't really listen to the radio and stuff. I just heard what was, you know, what the other what kids were playing. They were, yeah. So I, I know how the song goes because I've, I have the, you know, the, the song sheet Chords, or whatever. Yeah. The Roy Sakuma, like, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone had that version, right? Uh-huh. So, um, so I knew it and I knew how the song kind of goes. And then I was like, okay, well, maybe the picking goes like this. Uh, uh, and then, uh, like you know, just kind of follow the mm-hmm. uh, the melody line. So I just single, figured single out the single note melody line yeah. for that. I'm like, yep, that's the picking. And then I went to school. I was like, oh, I figured out the picking. They're like, yeah. that's not the picking. <laughs> yeah, <it was> close <laughs> enough. Close, but no. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty good, but no. Yeah, if you just yeah. if you can just do it by ear, mm-hmm. like it it feels good when yeah. you figure yeah. it out. And but the first instrumental song that i figured out was doogie hauser md because <laughs> uh, it's an octave <laughs> yeah well, it's because it's right after the simpsons <laughs> like so i was i was uh kind of jabbing at you know like while uh, while watching tv and then he kind of goes like doo, 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 doo. yeah the, i think the funny one that you you <laughs> you did and then like i was like at home and i started playing it i was like dang it i'll dream <laughs> like it's because because over here like when you do like skype lessons and stuff mm-hmm. like you'll hear the skype tone right and you yeah. start like playing <laughs> along to it and one day at home i was just like on, on my guitar i'm like why am i playing this and i'm like ah oh, dang it i'll dream again <laughs> oh, oh when you call someone <laughs> yeah. on skype yeah. Because sometimes, like, people uh, get the time wrong or something. Uh-huh. So I'm just there, like, and I got to call at least, like, two or three times just to make yeah, sure, yeah. you know? So <laughs> I'm like playing, just have it playing. Along. So I'm just like, oh, my God, what is the, what are those notes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to know the, uh, like, uh, oh, like from a Nokia you, phone. Yeah, Nokia phone. <laughs> just because, like, I would just hear it in the background. I'm like, what are those notes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Figure out yeah, anything, anything, anything. Yeah, anything. you can do anything on the Google. Yeah, that and that's usually what uh, people like. Uh, you'll hear musicians talk about like mm-hmm. the the thing that uh, I think people like to like romanticize about mm-hmm. is perfect pitch, right? Yeah. But musicians will usually be like, uh, you just close enough. <laughs> rel- relative pitch is like way more important to yeah, actually yeah. like yeah. learning and playing with people. That's true. And then they say like, if you learn it through emotional context too, mm. it's even better because you pull that up, right? So like a lot of times people say like, 
if you're think, trying to think of like uh, I think it's uh, Perfect Fifth mm. they think of the Star Wars scene like oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah nice and then nice. even uh, Jaws like too that's yeah. like uh, is that half, half step? step half step da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah just so, a half like half anytime they hear mm. like something like that and it's like kind of in like invokes that emotional response mm. in them they can be like oh that's a perfect fit mm. or that's a yeah. you know half step or whatever mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i remember um i got I, I was talking with the with mr shimabukuro back there like one uh one of, one of the days i was living on oahu still and uh, we we're like kind of just trading notes and stuff and he's just like oh you know what i figured out last night i was like what and he played like the family guy theme like full on with like the <laughs> jazzy chords and oh, stuff yeah? i was like oh hot dang <laughs> that's, that's pretty good yeah and he's like oh I was, so, just, I was just bored on tour so no like, matter yeah, yeah no matter how good you get you'll still be doing the yeah. same thing basically so, yeah. i don't know if he has it online somewhere but he played it for me and like uh he played it for me a few times with that first time on the phone where he's like oh get like uh like listen to this because what i figured out i was like dude jake that's that's awesome <laughs> that's you gotta teach me that but then um i don't know so maybe he might have played it like somewhere or maybe played it for fun or, or something but I, I i remember i thought i saw it on on youtube one of these um uh one, one of the videos that he was in but i, I don't know yeah. which one it is maybe you can find it we'll put it in the show notes but yeah he caught uh i remember one of the phone calls he's like oh, i just i was like bored on tour we were watching uh we were watching family guy and so figured <laughs> out i was like oh snap <laughs> do she poopy next <laughs> I, I feel like bad like mm. whenever we like hang out with people and we're eating food and stuff yeah. or like I- i'm hanging out with people because uh-huh. like if there there's a radio going on like i'll at least like start tapping out the beat like on my, my <laughs> thigh or something yeah. and i feel like that's all you can tell like it's uh, people are like uh, people who like to play music they'll do that kind of stuff like no matter where they are yeah. and yeah. like you know no matter because like abe we're eating at dinner he had the automaton, mm-hmm. and then every song that they're playing on the radio, <laughs> he was figuring out Trying on the yeah, automaton. No, no, yeah. yeah. So it was like, and and I bet like it wouldn't have mattered if we were there or not. That mm-hmm. would have just been what Abe was doing. Like, oh, I just hear something. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna figure out what it is yeah. like, on whatever yeah. I have closest to me. Mm-hmm. So side note, I love hanging out with Abe just because like the more you hang out with Abe, the more he reveals really how good he is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like how good of a musician exactly. he is. It's more it's and scary. more obvious. Yeah, it's like super scary but, because you know he's good, but you don't know how good. And the more you hang out, the more like he kind of reveals oh, a little yeah. bit. Little so bit. we're talking about Abe Legrimus. <laughs> Legrimus. And, and, and reveal is like a good word for yeah. it because he's not like, oh, yeah, he's okay, let, let me show you <laughs> yeah. how it's, he, he'll just start playing something and it's like, what are you playing? Like, what? How'd yeah. you do that? <laughs> that is like super. That's crazy. There's a video that I'm hoping we can put up pretty soon. Or we oh, we yeah. we just did put up a uh, or I put up uh, Benny and the Jets. You guys playing Benny? And oh, the Jets at the um at yeah. the festival. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So you guys can check that out. And that has Abe playing drums. <laughs> Freaking uh, Abe. So Abe, um, remember that first year that we did uh, San Francisco Uke Fest? Mm-hmm. Um. Like, we just passed by a piano. He was like, oh, look, one of these. And then he just, like, started ripping on a piano. I was like, what? I don't yeah, even yeah. know. You play piano, too. Like, he just, he everything he touches, like, he just leaps <laughs> it up. Like, it was amazing. Like, yeah. I it, every time I hang out, I, 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 I think I know exactly, like, how good he is. And then he just gets, either that or he gets better, like, the next every time, time I see yeah, Every yeah. time I see him and stuff, he's yeah. so good. That, Abe Legrimus is a, is a treasure. <laughs> that was our joke, right? Like, that Abe's going to take the automaton and then he's going to become, like, a <laughs> professional automaton player. Because first it was, like, drums, and then he's like, oh, ukulele, and then, yeah. yeah so He had his, like, melodica or something the last time? Or is it, like, uh-huh. Lenny's melodica that he was jamming on? He was just yeah. taking whatever Lenny had. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. like, jamming on it. Because yeah. that's not Abe's automaton. That was, yeah, that Lenny's, was Lenny's, Lenny's automaton. automaton. Well, well, that's the thing, too, is that Abe, he... He started on ukulele relatively late in his, mm-hmm. you know, career as yeah, a musician. Yeah, yeah. And he took maybe, it, it was, he, he told me that it was two years mm. between him picking up the ukulele yeah. and him like producing an a CD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, an album, a full album. So, so he's, he was like, give me two years on the automaton. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I love that first album, by the way. Like it's... Uh, I mean, Boondoggle Goggles, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Abe Legrima song, and also Starship Lumpia. <laughs> it's so good. The album's great. It's like, it's jazz ukulele, but then like he he puts in little bits of like island pop in there as well. Uh-huh. Like that Boondoggle Goggles For is definitely sure. island pop, but then like stuff like um, 
there's kind of this, I don't know if it's a centipede, whatever kind of song that he had, which is like, yeah. like dang, this, this kid is good. <laughs> kid is good. Kid is good. Yeah. I, I feel like <laughs> Abe, too, is one of those musicians who, like, is like, doesn't really confine him to mm. a, a, one set of genre. Yeah. And he's just like, I just want to play everything <laughs> and mix everything together right like into... I, I want abe in our band <laughs> to, to do anything he doesn't, even, he doesn't even have to play drums he could uh, he could just you know yeah. do anything and i'm sure our band will sound 10 million times better <laughs> i think i was thinking like god you abe and steven like and like steven on bass abe on drums mm-hmm. and like Lenny on saxophone. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty cool. That'd be a... Remember? That would be really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. First night of September. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that'd be awesome. That will be a sick band to play that song. <laughs> Even, um, uh, like, uh, Aaron sent me a video, too. It's like, check this out. And it's like Abe playing vibraphone. Yeah. He's yeah, like, he's really good. He's, what is <laughs> oh, this... he's so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's just kills it at anything, yeah. Mm. I actually mentioned that to him that that I, I just sent you, like, because it was <laughs> I sent uh, Kahai the video before we went to San Francisco, mm. and so I mentioned that to him, and he said that he had, he I I was like there is there are only like a handful of you. Mm. Like, you know, videos of you on YouTube yeah. playing vibraphone, but I know that you're really good. Yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's because I took down all the other ones. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like them, you know. But, I mean, so he's still, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they're, those ones were good, too. Mm-hmm. But now he's even better yeah. at it. So, yeah. All right. Everyone, let's, let's wipe our drool up from Abe and uh, let's, let's get another question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Alan, Alan asked, like, uh, about the tuning part. Yes. Is don't you put the tuning fork on your soundboard? Soundboard, <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. Um, yeah. You can put the tuning fork on any kind of a surface that will uh, project, basically. So you can do it. Um, people do it on their piano. People do it on the table. People do it on whatever. But anything that kind of lets it vibrate and you can hear the tune, you can do that. I think um, like uh, guitar- luthiers do though, like with yeah. guitars. Yeah. They yeah, hit too. it and then they put it on the soundboard and. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess that's just to get the resonance of the yeah, actual yeah. instrument. But yeah, yeah. I mean, most people do. I better. think most people do. That's yeah. probably why people think that. But um, so yes, yes, you you know you can put it on your uke and it'll definitely sound. But you can also bang it on something else and put it like uh, on that table that Aaron's using. And you can yeah. still hear it. And it's probably easier to do that mm-hmm. too. Like do that and then you know try and mm-hmm. tuning, Tune. like because <laughs> if you're putting it on your soundboard, yeah. you're probably like have your ukulele laying yeah. flat, yeah, yeah. and. Like yeah, it's okay. Because I mean, like, if you think about it, like clarinets and flutes and stuff, like, would you know, would use tuning forks back in the day. It's not like you're whacking a tuning fork and putting it on like your your flute or anything. Which I guess you maybe could, <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So next question. Thank you, Alan. Um. Okay. Uh, John kind of had like a, a pretty lengthy question. Okay, we, we like lengthy questions. Yeah. That first one wasn't supposed to be a lengthy question, but we took a half an hour at <laughs> <laughs> uh, So he said, uh, first, can you recall whether or not Jason Arimoto is playing on a low G uke in the blues course? Looks yes, like yes. low G to me, but I'm not sure. And I, I told him, I think it's a high G in the beginning. And then, and then he switches, switches to low G when he does the slide with the little part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, second, Jason mentions that in this course, he's going to take the happy uke and turn it to blues. Yeah. So my question is, um, I'm a low G slash high G agnostic mm-hmm. player. Are there particular genres or songs um, that are better suited to low G versus high G tuning? Hmm, not necessarily. I mean, like as far as genres goes and stuff, because you can you can play a low G in, in any genre. You can play a high G in any genre as well. I think it's how you play it and yeah. how much like if you were going to talk about the blues course, how much stank you're putting in, you know, those uh, those notes and stuff. So um, you know, you could you could achieve whatever sound you're looking for in you know with, with a low G, high G, yeah. or any genre. But yeah, it's more of like a stylistic Style. and um, techniques. And too. then yeah. yeah, if you yeah. need the couple extra notes that yeah. the low G provides, yeah. you know that that definitely helps. Yeah. But also, I mean, you can you can even do like the the pull off stuff, you know, with with a low G. I mean, you might have to use the same string. So instead of going, you know, it definitely sounds better. But you can do you can do that, or you can use the E. You can do that as well. You know, so it's not like you're fully limited. 
but it does sound different you yeah, might have different. to like, you know change yeah. uh, change a few things but i think it's it's fine so instead of going i guess if i were to do that say so if i were to do that i would do it that way i would do it like this so i'm still kind of hitting that g oh you know, to, yeah, yeah to do it that way yeah yeah it's we we talked about this like last week too or the week before where mm-hmm. it kind of is like you can do either you know you can play low g stuff on high g you can play mm-hmm. high g stuff on low g yeah. yeah but it just depends on like what you're compromising on mm-hmm. and how much you're willing to be like ah i can get like pretty close but it might be like 90 percent or 95 percent mm-hmm. and if that's good enough for you or if you, yeah. you want to go like if you really want to get, you know, like if you really want to play like Otosun, then you probably would play a low G. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and and I, I tell people for me, one of the main differences is if you're playing mostly lead, um, you know, a high G might work, you know, might work better. Not saying that low G can do leads and stuff because James Hills definitely showed us that, that you definitely can. But um, if you're doing strumming, I think the low G sounds a little bit better because you have a lot more range to work with as far as being a background, you know? Um, but that for me, if I, <clears throat> if I were to put them in different categories, that's what I would do. It's mostly that, like rhythm stuff, I would use a low G. Um, more me- uh, melody things, I would use the high G. Yeah. So Alan just mentioned, I'm thinking of switching to low G to do more slack key and slack key style playing. That's cool, yeah. It works on the high G, but is missing some of the lower harmonies on the second and fourth mm. string. So yeah, like yeah. stuff like that is just yeah. worthy to think about. Just like what Kahai said, you know, there's just some sacrifices that has to be made and stuff, and just depends how you know how close you're willing to go or how far you're willing to go from the original tune itself. But you can definitely get pretty close, you know, with a low G. You get closer with a low G than you are with a high G. I think, and I think <clears> some people too, they feel like. I gotta, I gotta make a line in the stand. I'm a high G player. I'm not gonna play a low G, or I'm a low G player. I'm not gonna tattooed play high in G. my you know, tattooed hey. in my chest. Yeah, low G only. But but I think it was Jason himself who said, right? Like that's why you need two gloves, one low G, one high yeah. G. Yeah. So it's like that's what a peddler would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To peddle his wares. Yeah. Yeah. But also like if you watch Jason play like yeah. at a concert, he does usually like break out both right. Yeah. Like, halfway. Yeah. Through yeah, I think he has like a scepter for one, and he has a regular um, uh, colo for for the other one. I think he uses um, the kind now Pepe it? Romero. That Pepe yeah. Romero. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I remember like back then he used to use that scepter like crazy, like every, especially when he's doing doing like effects and and stuff and uh, wall and uh, um, distortion and whatnot. Like that scepter looked so good with all those uh, with all those pedal sounds and stuff because it. Looks like an electric guitar, you know. It's kind of, kind of got that flying V almost like kind of look. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Victoria Vox is another that uses both. Oh, yeah. And, Low G and high G. regularly travels mm-hmm. with both. Mm-hmm. I think when f- was it Fusion Bags made that double ukulele mm-hmm. bag, she was, she was like one of the first <laughs> to buy it or <clears throat> like get it from them. Yeah. At one point, I think Jake was traveling with two, but it wasn't Low G and High G. I think he was traveling with like a tenor High G and with a baritone. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, with the baritone ukulele. Because he started doing, I think, he ilave, or oh. I think it was he ilave. Yeah. He's doing a Hawaiian song that was from his one of his albums. And I'm probably going to get this wrong because I don't know, like, modern Jake albums. But I think it was the one with, with the, the the lava thing, the volcano thing with the lava. I don't know. Like, Nashville <laughs> Sessions, is that what it is? <laughs> no, it couldn't have been Nashville Sessions. I don't know then. I don't know which one it's at. But Travels. I mean, Travels. I think it's in Travels. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. He loved it. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> he asked go, me about his first go, three albums. Look it up. I got it down. But his recent ones, it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's cool. <laughs> I, I do that sometimes. Travels. Like where, where I'll say, like, I know Travels. it's like they have this song on this album, and I think it's He Lave or something. And then I look, and it's like Kaulu Bahi or something. Yep. It's like ah, oh, pretty close. I went to a concert, and he was a uh, he was talking about the story of that of that ukulele because it's not really he gets like custom made kamaku ukuleles and stuff. But I think he said he ran into that uh, that particular baritone. He played it. He's like this. This sounds really good. Like this is this is the one. You know. Oh, he the, found it at like some random shop. Yeah, he said he bought it, and he's like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna play this and stuff. And <clears throat> and he was telling us that like. Oh, uh, when that one time in Denver that he was playing alongside was that last year or the year before? Oh no, it Something was a long time ago. Yeah, two, the year before I think. So, um, 
we were there we were kind of like we we're kind of jamming he was telling me and i mean heather about that uh that kind of baritone ukulele he's like it's it's nice to uh take a break from you know from like the the band part because he plays with like the bass player and sometimes plays with the guitar player you know um he's like time to take a break while everybody's kind of you know getting ready for the next set it's good to transition i just go play my baritone real quick you know and then like get everything else ready after i play my baritone it's like the little intermission you move on to the next part of the set like, that's pretty cool it's pretty cool i'm not gonna do that but that's cool <laughs> like that's go you man i love that he love it that, that he does i, I think it's he love it is it he love it on, on travels <laughs> okay <laughs> to me like it's not it's Ikona or whatever yeah, yeah. I'm like oh, okay Mr. Jake fan <laughs> oh Jake fan 92 <laughs> that's so username right Kahai yeah we always get <laughs> Jake fan 84 <84. Yeah. laughs> the joke though is it's me and Aaron right? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's Jake fan 84 and you are uh, 89 <laughs> yeah Gotta do that. Um, actually. We took up <laughs> at least a hundred <laughs> accounts each. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, next up, uh, this is kind of just like a you know like a whatever question. But mm. uh, Devin said, "Can he play the theremin?" Probably. I'm sure he could. Probably. I'm sure he could. Once he kind of figures out how it works, because because I mean, <laughs> he thinks the automaton is like. Right. That thing is not supposed to play in tune, but freaking Abe <laughs> well, was playing in tune. It's like, uh, yeah. how'd you get that? It's like pretty close. Like he yeah. gets, he gets pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty close. I love. I like. It's him. not made to play in tune. That's no, why. no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I like in reason. Like he starts off the you know the the melody line. He was like playing it. Mm-hmm. But then he would hit the wrong note and it's like immediately like slide up to the right yeah. one. And he was like pretty on it every mm-hmm. single time. I was like, dang it. <laughs> Whenever I play bass, that's like my go-to song. So like you always hear reason if I have a bass in my head. Because <laughs> that's like the coolest bass line, I think. Because I mean, other cool bass lines, I'm not good enough to play. <laughs> that's the only good bass line that I can, that I can whip up. <laughs> yeah. I think Gary, like uh, when you play a string instrument, right? Yeah. And if, if it's like guitar, ukulele, or yeah. something else, and you don't play bass, yeah, I think everybody kind of learns like, oh, that one I can <laughs> I can play a little bit on the bass. I can play this one song on the bass. For I, for me, it's like Tank from Cowboy Bebop. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Tank is good. Yeah. Um, I think Breezin on the bass is like everyone else's uh, Stairway to Heaven on the guitar. <laughs> I'll I'll guarantee play that at some point if I have the bass in my head. <laughs> You know what, <laughs> what? What song I like? I feel embarrassed to play sometimes. What's that? In, in like a guitar shop or something, is like Blackbird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like as soon as you start playing it, right? People like, roll their, like you can you can hear people's eyes rolling already. Like, yeah. as as it's like Blackbird. I love that song, but then you can just all the guitar workers are like, God dang it! Like Again. another one. <laughs> this is the fifth one today. Just today. <laughs> Some guy just comes up. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's, it. that's enough. That's enough. Uh, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> you, you, it, like you were gonna buy this, but please just just leave. <laughs> Actually, here's a guitar so that you'd go. Yeah. <laughs> we will give you one so, so you would leave. Just just take this, take this and go. What is what is if you are a, a worker in in guitar center or something? Like, what's one song that you you know you definitely not want to hear? Um, if on ukulele, let's make let's keep this ukulele related. You know, like if someone's looking at the ukulele is. What's the one song that will play that will drive you nuts? Oh, uh, and why is it Riptide? Well, <laughs> no, I mean, it's any any hey, soul sister, any song that <laughs> that you hear a lot of. <laughs> and why is it Wagon Wheel? <laughs> I don't think Wagon Wheel. Well, I love be, Wagon Wheel. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hey Soul Sister might be a little mm. a little sad for yeah, me. Just play the right E chord. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's. I, I, I mean, well, actually, I mean, not a lot of people play it the way that Train I guess so, it. yeah. So you wouldn't even really know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then he was even more irritating. He's like, ah, just play it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, so that E. It's like, as soon as you hear that, like, ah, it's not an E. There's a third in there. <laughs> like, <it's> a third. <laughs> there's like, and there's certain things too. Like, I, I, very briefly, I did a, like, working in a music shop. 
So like uh Oh Devin said under the boardwalk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be guys. That would be like, guys. All right, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, enough. Hey, I I wouldn't mind hearing that. Oh, oh like if so anybody like, else played it. Yeah. 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 What if they're like to do anything. What if they're like an ukulele on the ground fan and they saw that you were working and there they and wait, someone, wait for you to yeah. say yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Maybe waiting the long time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, next. Uh, uh, I think that was pretty much it for the questions. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. So. Nice. Okay. So, um, I don't know. What else do we talk about, guys? Let's let's. Um. Well, we got to set up another song challenge. Right? Oh yes. Let's do that. We haven't done that, and like we're it was supposed to be done two weeks ago. So here we go. Ah. Pen here. Bam bam! This is our old challenge, so I need to <laughs> erase this. That's from last week. That's not our old challenge. Oh wait, this is uh, from when uh, Mike was here. The towel is right there. Oh, okay. Uh, probably... There's a spray. Oh, spray's here. Cool beans. Let's erase this real quick. Um, while I'm doing this, uh, can the audience give me a few suggestions on what to um, what to put? <laughs> excuse me, what to put down for our next challenge? So keys, chords, keys, uh, chords, like. Uh, Optional Lyric suggestion, optional stuff. Yeah, because uh, we've been doing kind of themes, you know, lately. I guess because we're like, oh, write about love or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Ritesh said said that uh, he got the unicorn. He got the unicorn. Yeah. The fifteen hundred. What, what what does he like? It? I'm not sure. Uh, Ritesh, I will. It's it's recorded right now. I've been collecting cards for a long time since december seven months is a long time <laughs> eight long months time. is a long time okay and i've been spending Best a lot thing. on cards and stuff but if you are willing to hold that because you're like oh i'll sell it to you if you want to buy it if you are willing to hold that ukulele until you know because i'm i'm going to stop buying cards <laughs> <laughs> after tomorrow because tomorrow fontaine features come out <laughs> so after fontaine features i am not going to buy a single deck of cards to save up for that if you are willing to promise you're going to hold it, I will buy that ukulele from you. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here, folks. I will buy that ukulele from you at the full price that you paid for. So even though it's like third hand, it's not even second hand, I guess, because you would be second hand. It'll be a third hand. I'll still pay that price that you paid. Full price. 1500 I'll buy it. I'll buy it. It's sold to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's if he wants to get, like, you know, let it go. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what he said. You already said. You already said. Well, let's you, just make it, it, let's make it official right now. <laughs> <to> like, <laughs> really, I mean, maybe maybe it's it's good enough where he's, <laughs> where he's like, like, I don't yeah. want to sell it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> now that I, have I think it it's hand. worth more than $1,500. <laughs> I'll dream. Um. Okay, so, yeah. If you're willing to say that, yeah, I'll hold it for you and stuff because uh, that's that you offered it to me like two week uh, two weekends ago at the San Francisco Youth Fest. If you're still down to offer that, I will buy that ukulele from you. Um, maybe by the end of the year. How's that? <laughs> I can I can scrounge up like fifteen hundred bucks by the end of the year, right? Yeah. Maybe start See? a GoFundMe. <laughs> 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 okay. So sorry. All right. Did anybody give us any keys or chords and stuff? Uh, no. But uh, he did say done, so I'm guessing he's like ready to go. Okay, okay, cool. So it's official. You heard it here, folks. It's recorded. Adrian Guerrero will buy Ritesh's um, tenor, tenor mahogany Taylor ukulele. Right here. It's, it's so shall it be written, yeah. so shall it be done. <laughs> yeah, so right. for, for people who don't know what we're talking about, we... we a few episodes ago. Yeah, yeah. A, co- a couple episodes ago, we had... Um, what well, it was titled unicorn ukes right yeah. or something mm-hmm. so it's like what uh what ukulele do you mm. I, what it, like yeah. aspire to have yeah. or yeah. like be able to play again yes, or yes. what it was yeah so he's like oh you can come over to san francisco and pet the unicorn anytime <laughs> i was like yeah that's, that's, that's cool i guess well that's the thing is that <laughs> you know it it's it was a very exclusive mm. thing right because you had to buy the guitar and the ukulele as a combo. And I think both was like 10 grand. Yeah, like but, grand. but Ritesh was able to find somebody online who wanted to keep the guitar but sell, sell the ukulele. Uke, yeah. And so he was able to get one. <laughs> no, that's such a good price. He's like, oh, it's affordable. Now it's $1,500. Like, that's I amazing. Like 1500 bucks that I just pour out stuff. Fontaine Futures are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, nobody knows. Yeah, nobody knows what they're talking about. Yeah, you gonna buy a brick tomorrow, Kai? Yeah. <laughs> it's half brick. 
Yeah. All right. I wanted to keep F because we we've done C G D A like recently. Okay. Stuff, key so of F. Key of F. All right. So let's let's uh, speed this up. Key of F. So um, I want to do A since we're talking about surf. I want to do some surf chords, which would be one, six, four, five. So this is a little bit harder because we have four chords that you have to have. So in any like. Um, in any combination, as long as you have one, six, four, five in uh, in your so one, six, four, five, and bonus if you keep it in that order, okay? But that's going to be F, D minor, B flat, and C. So those are the chords. So that. So they could even do like C D minor B flat F. F yeah, if you want if you want to do that or uh, D minor B flat F C. That's a good one too. That's uh, yeah. na 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 yeah yeah yeah. That's, <laughs> that song there. Uh, so you can kind of do some really cool songs with that with, with with these four chords. So these four chords are what you need in order to complete this challenge. Basically, that's it. So here's some bonuses, and also you, you can have more than just these chords if you you know if you want to. So here's some optional ones. I'll just kind of, uh, I'll, I'll make a little bracket here and put it in the side. You can also have uh, like G minor or any other chord, really. Yeah, um, you can put it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Just put any other chord. Yeah. So plus any other chord. But you have to have those you have four. have to have those four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So bonus lyrics, of course. And what is our subject, Kahai? Give us a subject. Mm, I don't know. I always have trouble because I want to make it broad enough. Yeah, yeah. Where people will have like could write something about it, mm -hmm. but then, yeah, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. <sighs> write a song about your uke. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too cheesy. Not too cheesy. Because <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, like, oh, nah. <laughs> have have some kind of reference to actual cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's like a <laughs> obscure bonus. Like, if you can fit that in, yeah. that's like bonus points. Have an actual no. Have a reference to actual cheese. Yeah. Okay. Have a reference. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> okay. To. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actual reference to cheese. Uh, okay. Um. What else? Uh, modulation. I like modulations. So key change. Key change. Devin said, "Like uh, for a topic, yeah. how about leaving home?" Okay. You can do leaving home as well as a topic. Yep. Yeah. And if you can slide cheese in there, oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Side order cheese. <laughs> that's that's Mark's uh, Instagram. <laughs> Instagram dad had no. You know who I think would be really good at like putting in a cheese reference and stuff? Yeah. Lenny. Okay. Because Len <laughs> Lenny has that whole song about being on a diet. Yeah. Right? yeah. A diet for so, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's he's pretty good at that yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. My two favorite ukulele songs are uh, I Would Die It For You and the Hollow Hollow song. <laughs> the Pinoy <laughs> Hollow Hollow song. Oh, my God. There's a Pinoy right here. Yes. <laughs> That's my kuya. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm his kuya because I'm older than him. Yeah. All right. So anything else you guys want to add? Uh, I think that's good for our that's next one. good, right? Okay. So here it is. One, six, four, five. Um, you don't have to do it in that order, but bonus points to do it in that order. Uh, lyrics... Uh, have reference to actual cheese, modulations, and topic, leaving home. You don't have to do any of these. You can just write whatever sound that you want to write. Um, but cool if you do. Uh, go with the guidelines. So that's it. And as usual, um, you know, we try to give you guys some uh, some cool gifts and stuff if, uh, if you guys do the challenges. I don't think we gave a gift last time, but cause, uh, I think we were like kind of too busy and got... We're trying to get ready for San Francisco. We we didn't even I mean not we but I didn't even remember like to write my song till the day before. So, all right, but this one we are gonna give away a cool little prize. So here it is, key of F. You wanna say like uh, that? Our so we'll we'll come in with our songs on the twenty second, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like we usually do two weeks yeah. right, and then for the cutoff for like people who want to enter and then maybe get a prize mm -hmm. is like the twenty ninth. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll do, okay, we'll... how about this? 
I have because on a Lord Friday Live Jam, we're giving away a signed um, uh, songbook from uh, from the Summer Uke Fest. I have two of those. I am going to give because you guys are U Plus subscribers. I am going to give a signed um, a signed songbook, the second signed songbook to the winner of of this. Okay. So yeah. there you go. I was going to keep it for myself, but it's like, no, I think other people should you know, should have it. I know those guys, <laughs> like in person, I guess I could just get another one whenever I want to. But uh, it's it's really special because um, that's that was one that I was going to keep. But, you know, I'll, I'll give it away to you guys. Um, so write your songs. We really want you guys to write some songs. So that's what that's the, the big prize. It's a signed uh, signed by Abe Legrimis, Cynthia Lynn, Ukuleni, Craig and Sarah. Uh, Steven Espanola. Eric, did you sign that? If you didn't, you can. <laughs> if you didn't. And uh, bonus. So this is something that not even the Friday winner will get. Kahai will sign it for you as well. Okay, so there's one bonus signature uh, in there just for UU Plus subscribers. I also signed it too. But... I hope I hope you're ready for the price of that song book to drop drastically. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> so we're going to do this. We're going to give away that, uh, that song book tomorrow for the Lower Friday Live Jam. But this one is due in... Three weeks, two weeks, yeah, three uh, weeks, th three weeks for for them, and yeah. then we'll say two weeks, two for, weeks us. for us. Okay, yeah. cool, 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 cool. Yeah. There it is, guys. There is your challenge. You're gonna win a signed songbook. So big, big so, prize. This, so this even time. like uh, to really, make up for the last time we didn't give a prize. <laughs> yeah, and and really like the the if you guys want to enter and like you know it's mm. we love seeing people who work on their songs and who you know put in time into it, but. Mm. If you just want to enter, you can just play those, those chords. four chords. Yeah, because lyrics you'll are a bonus. Good. You don't even have to write yeah. those, you know, like uh, write lyrics to it and stuff. You can just make a cool little like strumming thing with, you know, with those four chords and whatever. Just like make something up, you know, as long as it's a little bit original. Yeah. You got it. And it's, we're not judging by like how good your song is. It's seriously just like a random number generator. Or, so. Yeah, and or like it's not about how like, complicated it yeah, is yeah. or how complex. We just it is. want you guys to try it and yeah. just have fun with it. Okay, all right. Um, anything else before we go? Uh, uh, we got some new stuff. So you said that you you put up a new video today. Yeah, Benny and the Jets is on our Balines. YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, is that just the that's not a 360? Is just the yeah. regular? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, speaking of 360, we did put a 360 video up. What last week? Um, or the week before um, that's Hee Love because oh, we talked about yeah. Hee Love so you can uh, check out Hee Love in 360 we were jamming with um, uh, Fingers and um, Shiloh Shiloh Pa because <laughs> he's worked he's worked on it for weeks so he knows yeah so Shiloh and uh, and Fingers uh, we're kind of jamming with them and stuff so it's really cool because Fingers is one of the people that I, I grew up um, kind of idolizing you know as, as a local ukulele player so it's really cool to be able to jam with you know one of my inspirations kind of growing up um so make sure you check that out it's it's like the best representation of like just casual jam because we didn't even plan on doing that we just kind of like you guys want to jam here you love it while we put this 360 camera down and yeah. you're just like oh yeah cool whatever you know so it's it's really cool just kind of casual jam um we have a brand new lesson that was uh, put up last week, so make sure you check that out. That was um, Margaritaville. So yeah. there's some cool new stuff that's here on Ukulele on the Ground. Make sure you check all those out. Thank you so much for subscribing to UU+. Plus. And for those of you folks who are listening to this via podcast, make sure you check out ukuleleontheground.com and sign up for UU+. Plus and take your ukulele playing to the next level. I'll see you guys next time. Aloha. See you tomorrow.